Amber, this is a uh, part 14 of the Dotson Restore. What do you think? So today's video is about the uh, battery tray relocation, get the motor mount down on the motor, clean the engine bay, I pull off the fender, put the oil pump, water pump, all that stuff, put the motor mount on. What do you think? You seem a little scared. All right, so let's get into uh, part 14. So I've been trying to figure out how to uh, downsize this battery tray. It was just too big and obnoxious for me. Um, so I just measured the battery on my Frontier that I just bought. It's actually smaller than the four-cylinder one because the V6 is bigger, so I had to pay more for a smaller battery. So I just measured that battery, and I could take three inches out of the width of this. I don't like this here. I really kind of want this over here, but I want to suck back more. So I don't know if I'll be able to use that. So I cut up a piece of a, not a big hole there. There's nothing there. It's a tire in there then. Way bigger. This is an inch bigger, but it's only 10 by 7 by 7. So in theory, I could utilize this back wall. The current battery is pushed out five inches from this back wall up here. And uh, I could easily push it back to that back wall. And I still have tons of ground clearance, supposedly. It's not going to be this low. It's going to actually go up like two inches. Because I only need about seven inches underneath this rail. So the battery could be here. And it would actually line up right around this edge, straight up. Right next to the fuse box, alternator and starter. It's kind of where it is on the Zs. Uh, you know, the trucks are up front. But there's no room up there, so uh, let's move back here. Just found a piece of uh, sheet metal that was bent 90 degrees. Came with my last rolling gate motor, I never used it. It's a shield for the chain. And uh, then you need to cut it. All I had to do was drill some holes. Perfect fit. So uh, this is a whole strip metal as well. That's actually the exact size that it countersinks in. So now I just need, it actually fits this side as well. The thickness of stock, I think it was what, 20 years or something? It's been pretty good. Lex factory. I ain't got, I could have cut off half an inch. I was going to cut off half an inch, but I forgot. I figured I'll leave it bigger just to give plenty of room for the clamps. But man, it doesn't stick past the original fenders. It's going to go up more. I'm going to shove it all up against the top of this. Jesus, close. So if it was the bottom out right now, that's pretty good. It definitely needs to go up like two inches. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, we're five inches from the fender. I think it'll work. I can always cut it out if it doesn't. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that's a perfect place for the battery. I like it. All right. So, I decided to take the fender off. It needs to come off anyways. I don't think this fender's ever been off. So I had to take out the headlights, take out all the trim. It's like three screws on this. And then I had to drill out two screws. Two screws are missing. So I got this out. I don't think this has ever been out before. <laughs> Looks like. Uh, there's three bolts in here. One down on the bottom, which broke. There's one, two, three, four on the top. There's a couple in here that are interesting. There's one right here. There's one up there which I couldn't be spinning. And uh yeah, it's a lot of bolts. And uh it's still solid. Oh, there's another bolt right there. It's gotta be the last one. So there's two in the inside of the headlights. Hopefully there's no more connecting this to this. Here it goes. I'll take it out the last one. Oh, Oh, 
looks like it's two. There must be one in there. Oh, they get to it from the front. Does this even come off? Yes, that broke, that broke. This is a body panel, that's removable. That's the bolt that's left. Spins. Oh, there's a removable cover on that light. I guess I'm just gonna have to drill it. I don't think I can put any pliers on it. Well, maybe if I took off the apron. I took off the front apron. I guess it come off one day anyways. Okay. Yeah, was this the nut spinning? So, uh, what I did was, turn it out with an eighth inch hole. And then I drill it out with a, uh, I don't know what it was. Another one. It's off. Now. Let it come off. The washer's still holding. Part of the bolt's still holding. There we go. Oh, the bolt is still there. Jeez. Oh, it's off. Off in there. So the nut is actually part of the fender. So there's a nut in there, which is spinning. Wow, that's different than my 620. Took the fenders off on that thing quite a few times. Changed them. So that one broke. One down there broke. That broke. I think I only had three broke. What is this thing? Oh, it's like a rubber. Wow, it's like a rubber liner. A piece of foam. I think I'm just gonna throw that away. Wow, that was foam. It looks actually pretty good in here. A lot of holes. Oh, that's from the inside. Yeah, I don't think this thing's ever been off. Looks pretty nice though. Wow, I don't know what these bolts are for. So. Yeah, so this is actually the. So here we go. It looks kind of close, right? This is bottomed out. Bottomed out. And it's not super low, which is bottomed out. Stock suspension. But, but, still gonna go up another inch. I can go up another inch. But it's also gonna go out two inches. These wheels are tucked like three inches. Actually, like four inches, I think I measured. Three on the back, four on the front. So when I put on the hard body, lower control arms, that should put out another inch or so. And if we do like a one inch wheel spacer, I want this wheel to go out like two or three inches. I got two inch spacers on the back. But if I put on wider Titan wheels, then I'll probably be back in the same area. So it's pretty close, it's pretty close. But I think, uh, so this is bottomed out. So if I did like two, if I bottomed it out, and if I did like two inch lowering spindles, Yeah, definitely hit if it was bottomed out two inches lower. But no, well then if I went up an inch from here, man, it's so close. I think it would actually clear with lowered and bottomed out. Super close. So uh I'm gonna go for it. Worst case I can cut it out and 
move the battery or flip it over and put a smaller battery or whatever. I probably just buy a small. This is pretty cool. I just realized that these uh, fender bolts were originally were some kind of weird quarter inch fine thread. I just ran a six millimeter by one. What was that? Down through all these. And they go right through. So I just did that to uh, all the bolts on the top. I even did these two. I did these four. And then uh, I even did one of the wiper ones, did this battery one. It's converted the whole side of the truck. It's a six millimeter by one. That was easy. So now just drilled out this broken bolt. And oh, I'm gonna drill it. I'll drill a hole. Drill a hole in this one. So I might as well tap these two uh, metric since I'm drilling them out. Hopefully I won't have to cut and weld this out. Do have one pinhole over there, but uh, yeah, I already drill a hole all the way through, eighth inch. I gotta step that up. So that's cool. Now I can just use uh, I've got tons of old fender bolts. Oh, I just realized that the two screws—they're actually Phillips heads that hold on the headlights. They all snapped off. I should drill them out because they were—they were just stripped. They're actually bolts or welded nuts. So I'll drill those out as well. And then these are the fender bolts. Let's see if I can do this one. Seems like a little too easy to go. Six mil. Six mil is technically smaller than a quarter inch, but at least six mil. Yeah, they are a tiny bit smaller. This bolt. Where's the other one I have? This one's better. They are technically a hair smaller than a quarter inch. I think they'll hold good enough. I guess the proof is in when we torque them down. Do they strip out? I should test it out here. Is this easy one to fix? Or? Hmm. Seems to be okay. In the worst case, I was planning on drilling them out to 7mm, which is not a bolt that I'm very familiar with, but they do make 7mm, and I have 7mm taps. So, that could be plan B. There's a lot of meat in there. What is this in there? What the hell is in there? It's got a hole in there. Oh, it's a spring. Ah! It's one of the missing headlight springs. I've been looking for one of those. Cool. How long has that been in there? Forever? There's not a bucket of headlight springs. Cool. No, I... Oh my god, there's another one in there. I'm trying to find those on eBay. They're laying in the truck. Ah, that's funny. I may not need any more now. Yeah, much closer. I just bolted a bolt in there to help it hold it on. And I'm getting very close. I got it almost to like one degree level. I think that's good enough for me. I'm really liking the way that looks. Just gonna fill the void. I'm actually gonna cut off one inch here, so it'll actually be tighter than this because I don't need eight inches, I only need seven. And then, uh, yeah, just put a uh, four by four post in there to clamp it. Had to pop a little hole in the inner fender well. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot. Now I'm gonna put bolts in there. I have I've had a bolt in here, now I'm just drilling a hole in there. And I just sprayed the paint in there to make sure I get in the right hole. Kind of tricky to get this square box level and plumb because everything is a different angle. So that's the best I've got so far. So here's my 
So this is a V6 Frontier D40. I'm supposed to use what a 35 grip battery? Yeah, 35 PLT. I said right on the top. But when I read the specs on uh, a 35, it's supposed to be like eight and three quarters tall or something. But this battery is an AGM. So it actually came with a spacer, I think, to crank it up. So I threw away the spacer. See so now the bolts are a little too long. I think the spacer was like half an inch or an inch or something. But look, so the battery is only seven inches. And then with the post, it's still under eight. Under eight. Okay. Easily. Even with these posts. Let's see. Even with these extra long posts, it's just a little over eight. So this battery would fit in that box for room to spare, right? The posts are going to be out towards the starter, and this would be up against the cab wall. So I could put this battery in that truck today, and it would fit. I'm trying to buy another one of these, but they say they're all eight and three quarters and stuff, which doesn't make sense. It's a 35 PLT. See, for the four cylinder, it gives a group 24, which is taller, which says fits that truck. It's like nine inches or nine and a half inches tall. But I don't have inches to spare because if I lower it, the funny thing is, I don't know how this happened, but this block of wood just happens to be eight inches. Just an old piece of scrap wood. Until I didn't cut it, it's been cut years ago. So it's actually a good representation of a battery. It's anywhere in here. And the other battery is seven inches deep. So it's more than enough. I'm still thinking of cutting an inch off. I don't really have to. And it's 10 inches that way. So you can see I got an extra inch that way. So, uh, I'm thinking that'll work. It's still maybe risky here because I got f uh, four and a half inches about four and a half inches of travel. Truck is bot is full droop right now. Uh, let me bottom it out again to see what it was. Okay, so the truck is touching the bump stops right now. We've got an inch to clear. So that's bottomed out. It'll go a little bit more if it actually hit a big bump or whatever. That's assuming if I keep it stock high. So if I go two inches lower. This is not going to work. So, do I buy a more expensive Altima battery and put it on its side? And raise this thing up? Because I think they're only like five inches on their side. Raise this thing up three inches? Or do I not lower the truck? I don't know. Alright, I just put the stock fender back on. I just lowered it back down. Now I'm going to pull the wheel out two inches probably. But it's still got to be able to turn. So when you turn, it's still got to clear that box. So. Ay -ay -ay. So actually, ironically, it looks like it's about. Oh my gosh, it's like dead even with the top of this fender. Ah. Uh. So, is that as low as I want it? That's about where I want it, but if I hit a bump, no. I don't know. I think I need to get it higher. I think I need to get a better battery. Cheaper battery. Bigger battery. Taller. Flatter. Smaller battery. Raise that box up. Now is the time, since I don't even own a battery. So here's the motor mount, kind of all finished welding, cleaned up pretty good. I think I still should drill a hole in here to let the water out, but uh, that's my offset motor mount to match the offset frame. I don't know if you can see, where is it? That one versus that one. You kind of see it's been pushed forward a little bit. Pretty good. I think I'm. I think it'll be structurally fine. I think I'm about to throw some paint on it before it starts rusting again. Here's a little mock-up of what I'm thinking the battery tray should look like. 
this piece and this piece are just sitting in there. But I kind of like the way that looks. It looks kind of factory. Obviously, I've got a little hole here I need to plug in first. I'm having trouble figuring out how to weld that one on. If I weld that one on, I won't be able to paint on the other side of that beam. So I'm thinking about making that a bolt-on or something. I don't really need that bar, actually. Maybe I should just cut it off. Solve all my problems. I could make this one a bolt-on, but... I don't know. I can't decide what to do on that thing. I kind of like the look. Yeah, I think I just cut that whole arm off. Just have it kind of like that. But I definitely want this front piece. Because it just uh, kind of finishes it off nicely. Looks kind of OEM-ish. So, it's a lot of work. But I think since the last video, I raised it up one more inch. So, uh, it's actually pretty heavily welded. It's actually a hold of battery now. Plus I got that bolt in there I can take out. Now I just gotta do all the repair work. So I got the oil pump back on, timer marker on. That's top dead center. So um that's top dead center right there. You see I got the mark on the cam through the hole, chain one. That's top dead center. I got the distributor in, so hopefully that's correct. The big lobe is on the right. It's kind of close to those original holes, so I think that's good. Oh, I also installed the water pump. So uh, I did it with just a gasket only, no sealant. So let's see how that works. Same thing on the old pump. Let's see if I get any leaks. I haven't tried that in a long, long time. I don't know if I'm sure of this, but I raised it up, I think another inch. Start welding it in. It's come together really nice. I'm actually liking it. And where's the pieces? I finished the pieces for here. <coughs> oh, I think they're out in the sun. I tried to rust coat them. <coughs> but yeah, I got these two sides welded on. Just got to do the piece on the back side. Fill a couple of gaps here and there. And, uh, it's gonna look good. Coming along. I don't know if I'm sure of this, but I raised it up, I think another inch. Start welding it in. It's coming together really nice. I'm actually liking it. And where's the pieces? I finished the pieces for here. <coughs> oh, I think they're out in the sun. I tried to rust coat them. <coughs> but yeah, I got these two sides welded on. Got to do the piece on the back side. Fill a couple of gaps here and there. And uh, I think it's going to look good. Coming along. So I just made a little plate. I'm going to bolt in from the inside to go around the steering hole. Still trying to find some kind of grommet to plug up the steering wheel. Thinking about putting a round tube and like a shifter boot or something. I haven't decided yet. Need to see what the D21 looks like. I think I've got a lot of this already. I think I got the battery tray finally done. Make sure I'll weld it in. Uh, so that's cool. It looks kind of factory. I just need to like seam seal it and clean it up. But yeah, I think uh, well this all up. It looks pretty ugly, but it's all sealed up. Let me grind it a little bit before I paint it. It's all solid. Just put the torsion bar back on so the truck should be rollable again. Now I need to take out this fender. Alright, so I've done a little uh, phosphoric acid cleaning metal prep. Man, the rust kind of went away. It looks really good. And uh, did a little sanding, grinding, welding. I'm getting burnt out on this stuff. I need to throw some paint in here. I just, uh, some other cleaner, I forget what it was. Red scotch brighted it, scraped it. I think it's time to put down some primer. Get some color in here. I'm getting sick of this, uh, ugly engine bay. I even flushed out that thing. But, uh, garage is all wet. This thing's starting to rust. Need to paint all that one day, but not today. I want to get some primer on the engine compartment. Got a lot of bare metal in here and actually get some color in here. 
or paint the front. I need to roll this thing outside, but I just put the fender back on. Just I don't need it off anymore. Kind of funny how somebody actually primed this thing. It didn't bother to even take out the grill. Seems kind of odd. But uh. Yeah, I gotta strip this whole front end when I paint the front. I'm just trying to paint the engine bay for right now. Focus on the engine bay. One thing at a time. It's looking pretty good. It hasn't been a while since it's been on the ground. I think it's the first time I'm on the ground with the hubcaps on. So no front engine. A lot of junk in the trunk, in the bed. Front end definitely needs to come down. I just put the torsion bar back in a couple of turns. I think it's too high. Man, I gotta get that thing down. Alright, so I can paint the engine bay. I try to tape up over all the holes. I get this thing clean and sanded and holes plugged. What a pain. Almost ready to primer.